It has been far too long since we played Final Fantasy 16, and what a perfect time to return with the release of the Rising Tide DLC. This story-based DLC brings with it not only new powers, but new bosses, and we here at Direct Gaming have the best guide for you to take on the Leviathan. Yes, this is the final icon battle that we will get in Final Fantasy 16, and it is a long one. Let's not waste any more time and jump into the battle. Like with all our guides, we're going to go over the following, a full breakdown of the moves from said boss and how to deal with them, and then a full playthrough of the boss fight sped up a tad. I would have said, hey, we're going to show you our loadout and everything, but you're playing as Ifrit, so there's no differences here. Now, if it has been a while since you've played Final Fantasy 16 and its icon battles, then one thing to remember is to check Ifrit's moves right as the battle starts so you can brush up on the combos and moves. During this battle, there are about three phases, so we're going to break each one down bit by bit. If you want to skip ahead to any of the other parts that you've beaten already, then go ahead and check the timestamps down below. Let's start with the water tornado that feels like a free fall part of this battle. The first move to dodge, which yes, you can dodge in midair, is this water beam attack from his mouth. Just use a standard dodge and you can go ahead and throw in a couple of hits after you've avoided it. Side note, this is completely different from his title roar move, which is similar but much bigger. When this move happens, you need to dodge to the side of the tornado so that you don't get hit. The next move is what I like to call Aqua Tail, don't sue me Pokemon Company, which again is a pretty easy move to dodge. As with any giant creature, don't forget to watch out for basic bite attacks, tail swipes, and more. When you see the move Riptide form around you, you need to wait about a second or two, then start to dodge to the side so that you don't get caught during the attack. Spinning Dive is exactly what it sounds like. Just simply hit the dodge button and when you see a Leviathan shoot out of the side of the tornado. A big attack to look out for is when he summons multiple water balls that fly at you. Now, I try to use Spitfire to knock them down, which seems to work sometimes, but other times it won't work. So just be careful if you happen to go with this particular strategy. I still recommend using it though for parts of this battle. Grandfall is the final move he will use where there are even more water balls to be fired at you, but it will be more of like a circular shape. These you need to simply move to the side and dodge however though, and you should be good to go. Just watch out for the charge attack that he'll follow up with right as he finishes this move. Other than that, for this particular phase, there's really no more new moves. Best thing you can do besides basic combos is have a charge shot ready to fire whenever he appears out of the tornado. This move tracks him and works really fast, and really helps with chip damage. Keep up the attacks until you stagger him with for the very first time. Do as much damage as you can during this, don't forget to add a triangle command in your basic 4-hit combo until he finally recovers. Once you get his health down to about a quarter of the way, part 2 can finally begin. Now, part two actually takes place on top of the water and is very similar to other icon battles like beforehand. Let's go over some of the moves to watch out for. Again, just like before, basic bite attacks, charge moves, and water blasts will still happen, so dodge when you see these and get in some extra hits. You don't want to take unnecessary damage, especially once we get over to part three. When you see Leviathan go underwater, chances are he's going to use a move called Breach. You need to get out of the circle by holding down circle and dashing to the side. It doesn't give you much time, so don't try to wait around for this move. If you get hit by it, it can deal a lot of damage. When you see the move Riptide show up, you need to actually jump into the air first, then dash slash dodge to the side. If you try to just simply dash or dodge, you're going to get caught in the attack and it's going to hurt a lot. Right after this move, he will also follow up with some water pillars that go straight at you, so get ready to move to the side yet again. Water Jet is a more mobile version of the basic water beam attack that we saw beforehand. Try to time your dodge right when he gets close to you, otherwise you're going to get hit a lot. Salt Spray is the final move to watch out for in this particular phase. Now, don't do what I did and try to block these balls with Brimstone. Just simply dash to the side and you won't take any damage. It's actually a lot easier than it might look. Keep landing combos and avoiding his attacks until you get his health about under halfway. Then, you're going to reach one of the two moments that most players that I've seen on the internet simply hate. Let's talk about the first one, which is the Water Shield. Now, we edited out the failed attempts, but I kid you not when I say I died to this particular part seven times times if you fail to destroy the shield he will simply wipe you out with a tsunami attack you get three phases to deal damage and if you fail well tough luck unfortunately here's what you need to do based on how many times i tried to attempt this the moment the battle starts get in close avoiding the water pillars and start hitting the shield with everything like your spitfire and your basic combos when you see four water balls appear above you into the sides you need to wait until they actually start to fire at you once that happens, perform one simple perfect dodge and you can continue the combo attacks without wasting too much time. If you see water under you start to bubble up, simply dodge backwards to avoid the first attack and then immediately dash forward to continue the attacks. This gives you extra time since the attack will actually continue behind you, but it won't hit you. When you get pushed back for the first time, don't worry about it. You simply need to start over again and continue doing what we mentioned beforehand. Also, don't forget to use Brimstone to help you out here. Remember, you need to hold down the charge button until it gets to around the dark red area of the charge circle. When it gets to the final bit of this phase, you'll see a countdown starting from 5 down to 0. 
You guessed it, if it reaches zero, tsunami time. You will need to get pretty good at this, and trust me, I know, it will annoy many. Keep at it though, until you finally break this shield and you actually stagger the boss. Now you can kind of sigh a bit of relief. Once the second stagger phase is done, it is now time for phase three. Buckle up, because it's about to get even crazier. Maelstrom is a giant vortex-like move that will appear below you. You need to jump and avoid it, otherwise you're going to get hit pretty hard. Don't rest though, because the moment this happens, he actually summons a ton of water balls to throw at you, so you need to start perfect dodging those right away, and it can get pretty crazy if you don't have your finger ready to go on the dodge button. The tail swipe move from the first phase returns, but then it is immediately followed up by a horizontal water beam, so make sure you either dodge that or simply try to jump over it. While Riptide is not a new move, it gets an upgrade here, so you need to jump and then dodge multiple times in the air to avoid the damage. I still couldn't perfectly dodge this, but I was able to avoid most of the damage until the final bit. Now during this third phase, you'll actually probably stagger him for a third time pretty fast. Get a lot of big damage done on him until this particular moment happens. Now for the second big move that will probably kill you or make you use like three heals at once, I present to you the Tornado, aka Water Spout. This will appear when his health is at the last 20%. Now, I tried looking up what you're supposed to do after I beat this fight, and it seems that you need to simply just dash to the edge of the arena, but I'm going to tell you right now from personal experience, this will take a few times to do, and even then, you're still going to get hits. It's a lot easier said than done. So if you get this done right away, then nice job, and let me know down in the comments below what exactly you did. I want exact details on this. After this attack is done, immediately after that, he will activate what is called Angry Seas. Basically, every single attack we have seen from the beginning of the video until now is going to get thrown at you at once. So, yeah, have fun. No, I'm just kidding. But you do need to remember how to avoid all the attacks that we talked about beforehand to avoid as much damage as you possibly can. He will not let up for a good amount of time. So just keep dodging, keep moving left, right, up, down. If you could go underwater, I'd recommend that, but unfortunately you can't. But you need to try and keep up the attacks, throw in some charge blasts if you can, until you finally stagger him one final time. The moment you finally stagger him, throw everything and the kitchen sink at him until you finally take this giant beast down. You will know you have won when he summons a giant tsunami, but it's all part of a cinematic cutscene, so don't worry about it too much. Now, here's a full run of the boss fight sped up a tad to show you how to take Leviathan down. If you enjoy the guys, then the like on the video shows us that you enjoy this type of content. And don't forget to check out our other Final Fantasy 16 guides, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth guides, and discussions in the top right corner and pinned comment. Thank you so much for watching the video. I've been Talon with Direct Gaming. I hope you have a great day and week, and I can't wait to see you all in the next one. Johnny.
海の上ここは一体
何を狙っている